That was a very important workshop for me. I released a great deal of resentment and learned to work on forgiveness. The relationship with myself improved enormously and never again did I attract an abusive man. So rather than wasting our time saying men are no good or women are no good, let's look into the relationships we had with our parents or that our parents had between each other. For example, what are your current complaints about the men or women in your life? Think about how you would fill in these blanks. He never. He always. She never. She always. Men won't. Women won't. Is this the way your mother or father behaved toward you? Did your mother treat your father this way? Or does this describe the way your father treated your mother? How was love expressed in your home when you were a child? You may have to reach back into your childhood relationship with your father or mother to resolve deep-seated fears surrounding a relationship. Ask yourself, what do I have to give up to be in a relationship? How do I lose me when I'm in a relationship? What messages did I receive as a child that created a belief in me that relationships are painful? Affirm the love for yourself. Perhaps you have a very difficult time setting limits and people tend to take advantage of you. You may be sending out a message that says, I do not value and respect myself. It's okay to abuse me and take advantage of me. But this does not have to be true for you any longer. Begin today to affirm your love and your respect for yourself. Look into a mirror frequently and tell yourself, I love you. As simple as this sounds, it's a very powerful healing affirmation. As you grow in self-love, your relationships will begin to reflect this love and respect as well. You may wish to consider joining a support group such as Codependence Anonymous or Al-Anon. These are wonderful groups that will assist you in establishing boundaries in your relationships and help you reconnect with the self-love and respect that is within you. Allow your partners in life to be as they choose to be. Encourage their self-exploration, self-discovery, self-love, self-acceptance, and self-worth. Finding Love If you are looking for a mate, I suggest that you make a list of all the qualities you would like this person to have and do go beyond tall, dark, and handsome or cute, blonde, and pretty. List all the qualities you want. Then review this list and see how many of these qualities you possess. Are you willing to develop the ones you don't have? Then also ask yourself what it is within you that could be denying or delaying the attraction of this person to you. Are you willing to change those beliefs? Is there still a part of you that believes you are unlovable or unworthy of love? Is there a habit or belief you have that pushes love away? Is there a part of you that says, I don't ever want to have a marriage like my parents, therefore I won't fall in love? Perhaps you have feelings of isolation. It is very difficult to feel connected to others when, for the most part, we are disconnected from our own selves. In this case, you need to really focus some quality time on yourself right now. Become your own best friend. Rediscover what makes you happy, what you love to do. Pamper and spoil yourself. So often we look to others to make us feel loved and connected when all they can do is mirror our own relationship with ourselves. What do you think you deserve in an intimate relationship? When we are coming from a place of feeling we can never get what we really want, it usually means our belief system supports not deserving. Is this what you truly believe about yourself? that you can't have what you truly want. This particular mental pattern no longer needs to be true for you. You can begin to make a change today. You see, if you expect the other person to fix your life or to be your better half, you are setting yourself up for failure. You want to really be happy with who you are before you enter a relationship. You want to be happy enough so that you don't even need a relationship to be happy. 
Also, if you have a relationship with someone who does not love himself or herself, then it is impossible to really please that person. You will never be good enough for someone who is insecure, frustrated, jealous, self-loathing, or resentful. Too often we knock ourselves out trying to be good enough for partners who don't have any idea how to accept our love because they don't love who they are. Life is a mirror. What we attract always mirrors those qualities we have or beliefs we have about ourselves and relationships. What others feel about us is their own limited perspective of life. We must learn that life has always loved us unconditionally. Jealous people are very insecure. They don't value themselves. They have no faith in their self-worth. Jealousy is really saying, I'm not good enough, I'm not worth loving, so I know my partner is going to cheat me or leave me for someone else. This creates anger and blame. If you stay with a jealous person, then you are saying that you don't deserve a loving relationship. Check your local phone directory for a group near you. It pleases me to notice that self-help groups are becoming the new social norm. People getting together with similar problems, working on solutions. If you meet someone at one of these groups, you know that while they may have some problems, they are working to improve the quality of their lives. I believe that we have comfort zones in our relationships with others. These comfort zones form when we are very small. If our parents treated us with love and respect, then we associate this type of treatment with being loved. If, as is the case for many of us, our parents were unable to treat us with love and respect, then we learn to be comfortable with this lack. In an effort to get our needs met, to feel loved and cared for, we associate being treated badly with being loved. This becomes our pattern and as a pattern is formed in childhood, it becomes the pattern we use unconsciously in all our relationships. This belief pattern that being treated badly equals love knows no gender bias. I believe that this type of dysfunctional pattern is more widely recognized in women because culturally women are encouraged to express vulnerability and are thus more willing to admit when their lives are not working. This is changing, however, as more and more men become willing to reconnect with their vulnerability. Women Who Love Too Much by Robin Norwood is an excellent relationship book, and I also recommend the audio cassette album Making Relationships Work by Barbara DeAngelis. An affirmation for all of us is, I open my heart to love and I am safe. All of the important work we do is on ourselves. Wanting your mate to change is a subtle form of manipulation, a desire to have power over him or her. It may even be self-righteousness because it is saying that you are better than he or she is. It's often the same thing with spousal abusers. They either grow up in a family where abuse was normal and they just continue the family pattern, or they blame the world and their partners for their own lack of self-worth. Abusers will never stop the abuse pattern unless they undergo therapy. Abusers almost always have a parent they have deep resentment towards. Forgiveness is a vital issue for them. They must understand their patterns and be willing to change. Our parents' influence. All my relationships are based on the relationships I had with my parents. I was so shocked when I first discovered this. Years ago, I'd gone to a loving relationship workshop conducted by Sandra Ray, expecting to learn how to attract a loving relationship. I was so dismayed when I learned that we were going to work on our relationships with our parents. By the end of the workshop, though, I learned that the reason I had so many problems in my personal relationships was because of the very difficult childhood I had. The abuses my mother and I had endured the abandonment and lovelessness of my childhood, it had all transferred itself into my current relationships. No wonder I attracted abusive men. No wonder they always abandoned me. No wonder I always felt unloved and unwanted. No wonder I always seemed to have bosses that frightened me. I was just living out what I had learned as a child. The relationships in your life. The most important relationship of all. The most lasting relationship I will ever have 
is the relationship I have with myself. All other relationships come and go. Even marriages that last until death do us part end eventually. The one person I am with forever is me. My relationship with me is eternal. So what is this relationship like? Do I wake up in the morning glad to find myself here? Am I a person I like to be with? Do I enjoy my own thoughts? Do I laugh with myself? Do I love my body? Am I content being with me? If I don't have a good relationship with myself, how can I have a good one with someone else? If I don't love myself, I will always be looking for someone to complete me, to make me happy, to fulfill my dreams. Attracting healthy relationships. Being needy is the best way to attract an unsuccessful relationship. As author Wayne Dyer says, in any relationship in which two people become one, the end result is two half people. Make a few lists, such as what I believe about men, women, love, marriage, commitment, fidelity, trust, and children. These lists will show you any negative beliefs you need to change. You may be surprised by some of the messages that are hidden in your consciousness. Clean them out and you may be delighted to see how different your next relationship is. It's interesting to note that most psychics report that the majority of people who come to them ask at least one of three questions. Psychics hear these same questions over and over. How can I get a relationship? How can I get rid of a relationship? How can I increase my finances? If you are in a relationship that you really want to get out of, use that all-powerful tool, Blessing with Love. Affirm, I bless you with love and I release you. You are free and I am free. Repeat this often. Then really be clear on what you do want in a relationship. Make a list if you need to. In the meantime, work on loving yourself non-stop. Love and accept the other person completely, just as they are. As you change and grow inside, you'll find that one of two things happens automatically. The other person will either align with your desires or they will disappear altogether. If they leave your life, this transition will be smooth. Always begin by loving and appreciating yourself. Everything else will change. Use the affirmation, I now discover how wonderful I am. I choose to love and enjoy myself. You're going to use it. You're going to thank God for them. Thank you for this test. Because I needed this test to grow my spiritual muscle to overcome this type of thing. Don't just search, search for rescue. Please help me. Please stop this. Please stop this. If you're going to say, please stop this and stop the one who is suffering this, that's all. Have I gone too far with this? This is, this is the way you have to look. You have to use your inquiry. You cannot just think it. You cannot just keep going, Who am I? 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 You know, some people are doing this also. That you can frighten your mind with being brave. Just look. When it is subsided, this activity has fulfilled its purpose. It's done its job, and you have done yours. You've used it to look, to clarify, to verify what is your true position. Are you the one who has been beaten? We have been trained to identify with this person who is victimized and who is. You know, so much injustice has been done against me, man, and building up some kind of some kind of case. And the ego, it loves, it loves evidence. April the sixth, nineteen eight forty-two. Huh. And before that, it was. So it loves this kind of stuff because by that it can live in the notion of being a person. 
and it wants to do that this behavior somehow when you see from the clarity of the isness all of this becomes laughable it's not there it's got no teeth this serpent has no teeth it has no venom you can give him to the children to play with but when you are identified with this stuff he is like the original serpent i wonder if you're hearing these things because every tool is being put in you to destroy these delusions to wake up not just even destroy them you only have to wake up when you wake up they are no more if you try and destroy them you give them a sense of life and a sense of of reality do you see this or not yes. so and that's it guruji but uh, in my case it's not like more like uh, an intruder but it's like enticer like it's seducing you it's a very beautiful image of same victim the one is being seduced or the one who's being enticed same what's the difference one in pink one in orange what what is it the same same identity is behind them it's still the me factor it's the me factor yeah yeah, yeah. but this one I, but in my case i feel as though you have a case you don't have any case it is it, it is uh trying to six of one and half a dozen of the other one and something is able to look at this acid 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 and as you look you don't identify it feels like something is crying is you know what can i do but this what can i do voice is also heard and you keep looking and just don't try to stop the feeling please listen don't try and stop the feeling it only inter- it grows with with resistance so let it be there but you just keep looking who is suffering this and the voice was what you talking about is oh, this is me is a me who keep looking it's a voice in the wilderness strongly believed in and that's where it's taking its juice its nutrient its nourishment is coming from your belief if who is the believer in it also this is your question you are unrelenting in your looking don't give up because your mind is not going to give up it's not going to say look you know what i've troubled you enough i'm just going to go to someone else you have to stop what does it mean you stop it mean that you stop feeding this you see it you see that this is this is a person and, and this idea and it's just an idea you keep looking you stay with him stay with him don't mind the feeling he's throwing eggs at you he's throwing everything at you. and you don't mind if you just stay 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 and just keep just looking don't judge don't identify just keep looking and just keep looking. who are you who is who who is it who is suffering and at one point he's gone the grip cannot it cannot sustain the grip and the one who is holding on to also both of them go then the tendency is to feel thank you thank you jesus thank you thank you thank you this one also you're not to us it is it is it is there relief is felt but don't identify so strong of course relief the sense of gratitude that can be felt but don't identify so strongly the space behind and in which the relief also is experienced be there is anybody still left on the swing and bridge with me thank you just a few more thank you that is how you are going to face these mind attacks they have to come they have to come and you have to use them because if they don't manifest you don't know they're there you follow it's only when you identify as a person hmm, you're behaving like a victim but when you identify as the what is as the investigator as the viewer as the witness of them you see they can't sustain their power in the light of such looking because the victim is going to run but the observer is going to stay and the illusion or the delusion cannot survive you see against such a, such kind of observation it cannot do it uh like 
when images just come and you have a strong clinging. Clinging. Yeah, clinging. Like that is watched. Strong clinging. You're a Klingon. <laughs> so that is watched. What makes it continue is if you don't doubt it, if you don't check it out, then he, you identify with the, the one clinging. He said, I can't, it's just so hard to let go. I said, but can you see, is it the what isness is suffering this thing? You have to keep coming back to base. You, it yeah. is watch. It is watch. Yeah. But it is very intense. Like sometimes you are here, and everything is peaceful, and then thoughts just come, and then you get involved in yeah. the okay, thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me talk you through it again. You, the thoughts come up. They come up. Okay. I didn't give those thoughts to you. No. They are already inside. The satsang is only exposing them, or exposing a potential that has still been living in you. Okay. So then somehow it's the, the, the thing comes up and then immediately identification goes. If identification does not go there, that just gets dissipated into it. just gets oblivious, oblivious into it. It's gone. No, I'm with you. So then something goes, it comes, it feels very, very strong. And because then identification is there. It's not, it's not letting go. Okay? The monkey's on the back. It's not letting, it's not letting go. Is this perceivable or not? Yes. So right there, you begin to stay, look and say, but that, that is perceived. Then something goes, but I'm not getting off. <laughs> Supposing you meet this type of thought, you know? Sometimes you meet someone. Suppose someone, you open the door and they walk into your room. Suppose someone knock at your door. You open the door and say hello and just walk straight in. Huh? Go to the kitchen, start to make a breakfast. Okay? I say, hey, 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 what's going on here? I don't even know you. Get out of my house. Okay? There's not really any difference. Just one wear pink, one wear blue. But it's the same characteristics, the same identity that's being enticed. So you just go to the thoughts because, like, something, images, and then you just involve with it because. Like, no, that's what you've been doing. Yes, I'm. Yes, okay. okay. But like, that's, that's not what I'm telling you to do. No, 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 no. Ah, church, I, this is being watched. Like some thoughts come up about the future, and then it's so enticing. You just like go with it. Go with it. There's nothing wrong with that. If I want to, if you know who you are, and then you want to play with the idea, use your imagination, playful a bit, you know, I think in the future I'd like to do this kind of stuff. We don't take it so seriously. You can have a bit of fun with it, why not? It's when you believe in it, you believe you are really this guy who has a future in the way that your mind is projecting, then you're up the tree. But if you are simply just playing a little bit and I think I like to do this, and you enjoy, you know, enjoy imagination. Of course, it's one of the one of the abilities of consciousness is to imagine, to create, to play. It's meant to it wants to play, but we taking our, you know, it's like it's like you took the role too seriously. You you you're playing King Henry the Eighth, and you're on stage, and you're oh, and they say, oh, he's the greatest King Henry the Eighth, oh, oh. and then you go home dressed. As King Henry the Eighth, and saying to your wife, "Where's my dinner?" And he says, "Well, I didn't make any." Off with your head! You know? I mean, you are still role playing when it's time. It's finished. The game is finished. It's okay. It's a play, but you have taken it too seriously. You know, and then you can say, "Wait, the guy does he know it's a play?" You know? So the the one who's awake is saying, "Do you recognize that it's a play?" You go, what play? The next time you say that, off with your head as well. <laughs> this is what is happening. In fact. Can I say something to that? Because it really relates to me also. I, um, I was also just having movies going on, how I speak to you, or something that's just running, and then something else that was not the isness, of course, was very bothered by that. And that made it stick, and then it kept coming, like just silly stuff. Also, could be, could be, could be. Don't get involved in any scenario, particularly. Yeah. Let, let me explain this thing before, because we. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> Don't get involved. It, uh, we're going to have one long satsang today, right to the evening. <laughs> Don't get involved in any scenario, okay? Um, just keep staying in the place of the what is. You can look from there. It's a big window. You can look at the whole world from there, okay? But keep confirming your place. That you know, not confirm in some rigid mental way, but but from from the in the beauty of the discovery of the what is. Look, and then you can see your persona acting in all this acting. And stuff. But something does not take it in that deeply anymore. And to that extent, you enjoy. No. <laughs> now, normally, you would think a reasonable person would go, Oh, sorry, mate, I was just really hungry. I'm going. What if the person say, I'm not going? And put his, put his foot up on your, on your table, lie down, and say, Listen, go and fix me a cup of tea. <laughs> and you say, You've got to be crazy. You can't come into my house. I get out of my house. I'm not going. What do you mean you're not going? You heard. <laughs> what do you do? What if a thought come and you say, Get out! Get out! And he looks at you and go, <laughs> I am not going anywhere. Okay? What will you do? What will you do? Do you say, Okay, I leave then? I'll go and rent another apartment. No, you won't. You, what are you going to do? You have to find out, this cannot, this cannot be true, this cannot work, this cannot work. You know, I am the landlord of this house. This is an imposter, okay? And there's no police where you live. You have to get him. How are you going to get him out? How are you going to get this thought out? No, it cannot be. He, he's in your bed? <laughs> He's got the remote control. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look. I don't know where we're going with this. No, okay, let's, let's take a look. Okay, so some, I'm only pushing it to see as far as it can go. There's a thought there and it won't shift. It won't shift. And something is feeling like, help, uh, help. I, I, I've seen people like this many in that state, gripped by their own mind. Okay? So, where are you going with this now? So, you say, yes, I look from the what is, okay? but it's not moving. Because you are not the what is. You are just someone thinking, I am the what is. Okay? And the thought knows you are not yet the what is. <laughs> you go going, listen, I am the what is. <laughs> and the thought goes, all right. What you going to do? Or what you going to do? So what I'm pointing out is this. Either you are in a place where you have identified, because what tends to happen in situations like this, is that you are a strongly the strong force of identification is coming there in this play, and this identification is producing all this acidity, and something, and the one who is going, I don't know what to do, is also part of the play. Okay, now if I say, don't get involved in any scenario, you may say, but I mean, like, I mean, if my house is on fire, I shouldn't put water to it. No, you will do whatever it is that's needed to be done in that moment. And such is life. It's like somebody coming to you and saying, Suppose you're attacked by three people, what would you do? Well, I'll do that with one of them, and then I'll do that with the other one, and I'll do that with this one. That's your fantasy, because when the time comes, maybe you run and leave your grandmother in then. We don't know what you will do. So you don't have to plan anything that is okay, you know, I'm going to do anything about the future and just forget it. Trust that you have been called by grace 
as life presents itself to you, you something will respond in the appropriate way. You don't only have to believe this, you can test it out. And you'll see, you can then come and say, you know, Muji, actually, that doesn't work like that. Because the time came and I fainted, actually, or whatever it is. I said, well, that was what was meant to happen. If you fainted, I mean, when, when you face, or suppose you're attacked by three guys and you faint, they're not going to beat you up. They're going to say, oh my God, let's get out of here. So you don't know what's going to happen. I saw one video, actually, some guys were attacking one guy. They come to beat him up, okay? They were coming to beat the guy up, and you know what he did? He pulled his trousers down. And they took off, and they just said, no, 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 no. I don't, they don't want anybody to see them harassing someone with no trousers. I mean, that's not cool, you know? So they took off. Now, where did that idea come from? to take your pants down from the what is, I tell you. <laughs> Just trust. It, it, it. The appropriate thing will happen in the right time. I mean, it doesn't work if a dog is attacking you, take your hand out of But anyway, my point, my point is simply this, that we, we, we don't trust in the life because mostly we've been conditioned to act prematurely and to force things and to imagine too much, and so you're out of sync with life as it really is. That's what happens too much personhood, too much projections. And so we lose our spontaneity and our intuitive uh, functioning and perception. So all I'm saying is just to just, just forget about all these techniques of living. <laughs> Discover yourself as life, it is enough.